Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. We thank you for this incredible book, Bible. But we also thank you for this incredible book, uh, Mark. Have your way in our lives. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. And we give you thanks. 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 In Christ's name, amen. So we're amen. in the first chapter of Mark. Uh, the amen. Lord Jesus in the first chapter of Mark has called some disciples. He's been water baptized. Here comes Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, he's been... Uh, He's called some disciples. He's been water baptized. He's he's at the beginning. He's been to he's been in the wilderness as kind of boot camp, and now um, and now we're down all the way down to twenty one. I don't know four lessons into this or something. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. For a book that you could read in a, a matter of uh, under an hour, um, but that's fine. I mean, there's an awful lot of detail here behind the scenes. Um, so we're I, getting to a little more of it. Moving on to verse 21. This is Mark chapter 1, verse 21. Um, I've got the NLT open here. Okay. Um, we are of, uh, this is immediately following Jesus' uh, recruitment of the, uh, of, uh, for the disciples so far. And uh, he is uh, he and his companions, the ones he was recruited here, um, went to the town of Capernaum. Um, so this is along the shores of Galilee. It's actually uh, Capernaum's up on an elevation above the shore, but it's very very near the shore. It's within uh, probably within uh, three quarters of a mile or so, maybe less. Um, beautiful little spot. Um, and, um, at this, it, it, Peter, uh, ultimately Jesus with Mary and at least some of his siblings actually moved from Nazareth to Capernaum. And in fact, um, the, uh, quote unquote chamber of commerce there actually put up a sign <laughs> at the entrance to the town saying Capernaum, Jesus hometown, <laughs> which I get a kick out of. Oh, uh, it's a beautiful spot, and very possibly uh, Peter Peter's house is there. Uh, the Catholic Church built this enormous structure over the ruins of Peter's house, um, and uh, the the uh, synagogue in which um, will be discussed here coming up is is right there, uh, very close to Peter's house. It's uh, Peter's house could have been the parsonage if uh, the synagogue were a church. It's only about uh, 30 or 40 feet away. Um, so anyway, um, he's in, a, uh, so Jesus came, with his companions came to the town of Capernaum. And when the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to preach. Sorry, began to teach. Okay. Okay. So we've his disciples have left everything to follow him and they go up the hill to Capernaum and you know just it's a it's not uh it's not out of their normal life uh, Peter's house is here or one of Peter's houses is here and um so when the Sabbath day comes which is Saturday we worship the Lord on the Lord's day but actually here at Mid Cape we worship the Lord every day because of our morning Bible studies and because all the stuff they got going on Sabbath day comes Saturday comes and he goes into the synagogue and began to teach and it was it wasn't it was common for the rabbi to say anybody got anything to say <laughs> we say who's got a testimony but that's you know that's not really how they say it um so he goes into the synagogue a pretty you know pretty common event in the day who's got something to say and jesus steps up to teach mm -hmm. um, and mike, the people yeah mike yeah i think that uh you know once again we 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 spoke of before when he chose his disciples yeah and now we come to this part here and <clears throat> 
as Rich shared with us, I it, it uh, I didn't know that it was that close, and the facts that um, everybody probably knew each other right. from from going to yep. synagogue together on Saturdays and stuff. So I would think that Jesus was probably known to the synagogue and to uh, the people that he was teaching, as well as, well as um, the fishermen that he called and stuff. And now it becomes real to me that they 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 kind of all may have known each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could you uh, was... could you move the uh, move the microphone a little closer to Mike? Okay. Oh. Um, Please hold. Your call is very important to us. Um, there we so go. I, 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 Check the I, screen. It should be resetting. Okay. So, um, but Jesus is really just starting his public ministry uh, now. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can argue that his public ministry was uh, highlighted when Mary told him to turn the water into wine or, you know, take care of these people. But now he's been water baptized. He spent the time in the wilderness and now he's gathered his, some of his early disciples and now he goes in to teach. Right. Yeah. Yeah, as far as the this gospel goes, back, back in 15, again, as we were talking yesterday, uh, where Jesus said, this is the first red letter uh, text, if you have a red letter Bible, the time yeah. is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. 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 That's 15. Yeah. So here we are picking up in 22. Yeah. Uh, the people were amazed at his teaching. So he's teaching in the synagogue and the people are amazed. For he taught with real authority. It's not like thus saith Isaiah or thus saith this prophet or that. He's saying, verily, verily, I say to you. Amen. Amen. Uh, quite like quite quite unlike teachers of religious law. That's Mark right. Adds. Yeah. So the people so, were amazed at his teaching. He taught with authority, quite unlike the teachers of law. So but but if you teach with authority and your stuff sounds like you're on quaaludes, that has no power. But he's speaking with authority and he's reaching into their hearts with his teaching. So so the power of the spirit is working through him into his audience, and they're like, wow, <laughs> this is so it's it's not only that he quotes himself or he speaks like I say unto you, but but what he's saying is so is so life-changing that they're like, whoa, yeah. this isn't how Sabbath was last week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is entirely new, you know? Yeah. Like, like you said, he, he, it was the coming out. And I think another thing is, is that um, as we learned when he went out into the wilderness, that at that point, the spirit fed him and 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 brought him to that point so now he's coming with the spirit of god upon him yeah. and he's like you said he's coming out i mean he's not just coming out as a teacher but in many senses as the lord and the christ that they had been waiting for that's right um he's revealing himself and uh it's just blowing them away, and <laughs> the religious folks are going to be really yeah. blown away as we're going to continue and see, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. Crazy. And it's not, right. It's not just the people, but the evil spirits heard him as well. Verse 23, suddenly a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Wow. Of Nazareth. Hmm. Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. Oops. I know who you are. The Holy One of God. Yeah, it's in the plural at first. It's, why are you interfering with us? That's right. Indicating so, the plural. Have you come to destroy us? And then the speaker, right. the speaker, the I guess he's the spokesman for the demons. The demon <laughs> spokesman comes forth. I know who you are. The Holy One of God. Not a Holy One. Not uh, Holy One of God, the Holy One of God. 
Suddenly, but Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet. We, Come we, out of the man, he ordered. Let's let's stop here, though. Yeah. Okay. So in the middle of the synagogue, in the middle of Jesus' teaching, a, a man possessed wow. by an evil spirit cries out, why are you interfering with us? Now, it's interesting that one of the commentators said that word possessed is the same word that Paul uses about, about a believer. We, we, we understand that the demonics possess their, their victim, but, but in the same way, the Lord Jesus possesses us because we've, we've committed our life to him. He's, uh, he's marked us with his seal. So it was an interesting uh, thing from the commentator who said, that's the same kind of word that Paul uses about the relationship between a believer and the Lord Jesus. Hmm. How 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 much more that we think the demonic is possessed by an evil spirit than we yep. usually think about the Lord Jesus possessing us by the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, I mean this dude straight names him out with his name. Yeah, and where he's from. Yep, and mm -hmm. and uh, it and the fact that he's saying, "Why are you interfering with us?" You know, seems that the the, the uh, <clears throat> The evil spirit, it's saying evil, it, possessed by an evil spirit, cried out. It says it right there that it was an evil spirit. Yeah. Um, I mean, why have you come to destroy us? Um, wow. You know, I mean, they had a, the, the spirit had a, a stronghold on that community. Yeah. Um, nope. be, it, because it was there in the temple. I mean, in the synagogue, right. that that this happened. It wasn't like out on the street where someone came up. I mean, this was the the they're calling them out right in the middle of a uh, a service. You know, that's right. Wow. So here we have the disciples who have left everything to follow Jesus, but they really don't know who he is yet. They just know that they're supposed to follow him, and they leave their nets, and they they go off to Capernaum and. Um, no, but the but the enemy of Jesus knows who he is. The yes. followers of Jesus don't yet know who he is. It's a pretty no. amazing. We see that in the Old Testament sometimes too. In, no. in Jericho, they were in fear and trembling of the people of God and the God of the people of God, and so much so that they were just they were just losing it over. Uh oh, they're coming. We're going down. Whereas the people of God said, oh, look, they got big walls and they got all this stuff. We won't ever be able. So the people opposed to God know sometimes who God is more than the people who serve God to our shame. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, we should note, too, that this is a spirit. This is not mental illness. Jesus, right. uh, Jesus healed people. Uh, but obviously here he delivers them. And there's a difference. That's right. Um, we should make the point that, uh, I mean, in mo you know, modern uh, parlance, people would be tempted to think this is a person mentally ill. And, um, and they might be. I mean, and the, they might the, be, yeah. But that's a, that's a product the of the spirit. That's that right. Mental illness. It's possible that, it's yeah. Really, so you really need discernment when you're dealing with somebody who's who's acting in an evil way. Is this yeah. demonic? Okay, then that's how we deal with this. Okay. Is this is this uh, mental health? Okay, then we deal with this like a different kind of, so you don't just jump into something and say, well, I know how to do this. The answer is, Holy Spirit, empower me to do the right thing for this particular person at this particular time. We, yeah. we said this was his coming out thing and, 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 you know, that even the demons knew who he was and they Amen. pretty much were the first ones to cry out <laughs> publicly. Yeah who right. he was and you know we can we can see further in the gospels that that the demon the demons knew who he was yeah. and often often um identified him publicly That's themselves right. uh when there was people who didn't even believe um but but you, like you guys are bringing up something that that uh he didn't heal and he didn't deliver. 
and it wasn't it, it, he didn't say that they didn't it wasn't talked about deliverance or healing it says why have you come to destroy us right i mean right i mean i mean so so you know i mean back to the garden you know i mean it, god god had provided this 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 coming out party and mm -hmm. the the demons of hell knew it you know right, and, right. Uh, yeah. okay uh, let's try 25 yeah uh, I know who you are, the Holy One of God, but Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet. Come out of the man, he ordered. Oh, there you go. At that, the evil spirit screamed, threw the man into a convulsion, and then came out of him. Amen. Um, amazement gripped the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened. What sort of new teaching is this? They, <laughs> they asked excitedly. It is such authority. Even evil spirits obey his orders. And the news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region of Galilee. He's Amen. Literally so here we, the Jesus, the scriptures tell us every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Now the question always is, is he your Lord? But the demon here comes face to face with the Lord Jesus says, I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. And Jesus says, chill. Be quiet, come out of the man. And the evil spirit screamed, the man convulsed, and he came out of him. So why is Jesus not allowing the demon to, to glorify him? And the answer is because he doesn't need the glory of demons. And mm -hmm. also, it's not his time yet. We have a we'll be talking about a clock. Jesus is marching toward Jerusalem. We're three years out from that, or something like that. And the prophecy in the Old Testament puts him in, puts him in Jerusalem at the right time. So it's not the right time yet. And this this segment of Jesus's ministry is we'll, we'll look at this in terms of segments is amazing, and it's um, and it he he's he's also keeping his disciples quiet about who he is as they figure it out. They can share that among themselves, but not share it publicly yet because. When it is revealed that he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, then everything changes and people are going to try and put a crown on him so that he'll be taking over from the Romans. Right. Yeah. They, uh, Jesus is not going to tolerate um, a witness or testimony from a demon because they are inherently liars. They are inherently deceivers. They are of their father, the devil. And uh maybe they'll come forth with yes what what they said here was true uh revealing truths that uh were unbeknownst in many uh, senses uh but uh they may start off with the truth but if you start relying on demons for testimony you can bet they are going to uh come up with some curveballs that will take you off track and yeah. uh he's not going to tolerate that and, uh, and again, getting back to verse 15 in this, uh, Jesus' timing is critical. He, right, he can't have um, uh, his, his uh, ministry being announced too soon. The people will storm him and try to make him king. And if yeah. it's out of time uh, with the rest of the um, proph prophecies that have to come uh, together at exactly the right time, for instance, tr the triumphal entry is cal calculated to the day from 173,880 days prior. <laughs> it's got to come to pass on that date. So he can't be, they can't be trying to raise him to a uh, uh, kingship too soon, or the prophecies will, um, will not fall in place when they're supposed to. And the prophecies uh, have, as Mike's been bringing, bringing it out, the, the prophecies that give so much veracity to the scripture that these things have been said before and are now coming to pass now they, if they come to pass in sequence as they're supposed in, in the right timetable then then they, their veracity is not only preserved it's it's multiplied it's increased so um the timing here is is critical to uh the overall mission yeah, yeah. i agree he stops uh, both demons and he stops demons and uh, people from testifying too soon that uh, too much of the word gets out. 
and, too soon. And it, the demons, you know, I mean, they they knew this. The devil fought with them in the de in the uh, in the wilderness, and you know, he knew that that whatever he could do to throw prophecy off track and out of the the uh, time that it was supposed to happen, he could trip up the whole thing. There you go. And so all along Jesus's ministry, all the way to the cross the demons were trying to trip up everything along the way and yet fulfilled every prophecy, sure. which numbers people like I've been saying are just blown. It just, the, the chances are so great that everything has happened in the order and the way it's supposed to happen that even, you know, the demons tried to trip them up and couldn't. That's right. And uh, you're right. Like he, he had to fulfill everything that he had to fulfill. And uh, too soon or too late, but perfectly. You know, and, right. And uh, that's what he did. And the section in Chosen, um, the disciples are really frustrated that they can't tell people yet who <laughs> Christ is, that they, that they, so, so when the breakthrough happens and they're allowed to tell people, this is like, whoa, we can now tell people who you are? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How amazing that is. So here we are still in the first chapter of Mark. We've seen, um, we've seen the ministry of John the Baptist. We've seen the water baptism. We've seen the time in the desert. We've seen him call his first disciples. And we've seen his first miraculous thing happening in the synagogue. Um, right after his his calling and all those kind of things and we're only we're only in the first chapter of mark and it's a whole lifetime's worth of worth of experiences oh. as far as our perspective is um we could talk about it forever just in one chapter <laughs> amen lord we yeah. thank you for your power for your authority we thank you that you gifted us with your presence that we can be possessed by Jesus, we would ask that you would fill our every every pore, our every cell. That you would that you would be Lord of all that we think, do, and say. Oh, transform me, O oh Lord, so I can make a difference. In Christ's name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you for this day, Father. I ask that you would continue to work in my life, Lord God. Show me where I'm wrong and show me where I'm right. Help me to make right what I can make right and leave away with everything that's wrong, Lord. Um, I ask that you would bless our pastors, Pastor Perry and Pastor Boyle, Lord God, along with the other leaders here at this church. Continue to heal them. Continue to raise them up, Lord God, day after day. Protect them, Lord God. And just work with this little church on this day, Lord God. Yes. We give you our thanks. We give you our hands. We give you our hearts. Yeah. And everything and everybody that's listening online or on the radio or wherever, that they would be blessed this day. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, thank you again, Lord, for your word and your spirit and your the uh, the lessons, the snapshots that you've given us here, the look back in time to the uh, miraculous events that uh, initiated, inaugurated your ministry. Still a thrill, still a thrill yes. to just hear it come together. Yes. And uh, so, so great. The story is not just the greatest story ever told. It's uh, the endurance is amazing, and uh, we just appreciate it so much. We thank you for it. We pray for your continued guidance that we may live lives that glorify you. Yes. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Blessings Amen. to you all. Bye. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>